beautiful morning. What, we ordered the weather and they came on time. Um, and so we're thankful that you've made this choice to be with us in worship today. Uh, we hope that this will be a blessing to you. And we are thankful to the staff, the CPAC staff, who's worked to help us uh, put this together this morning. And we, like I said, hope that this is a meaningful time for you today. Just a couple of announcements before we get started. Uh, first, we just want to remind if you are if you serve on the SPRC, uh, we are meeting at 1030 in Jeff Wall Hall at the church. And just want a, a brief reminder about that. Otherwise, um, if you have just come across us this morning, uh, maybe saw us saw us online or just wandered in the place today, we want to welcome you First United, from First United Methodist Church. We send you a warm welcome, and we are so thankful that you are here as well. Um, today, maybe you've heard, is Camp Meeting Sunday, um, so we hope that you enjoy the blessing of this wonderful music today, um, and we just pray that this, as we've said twice now, that this is a real blessing and that we find joy in gathering back together again. So... Um, with that, if you would join me in a word of prayer before we begin our worship, let's do that. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the joy of your creation. And we thank you that we are able to gather together today to worship you, to find joy together, and to worship and think on the gifts of your Son, Jesus Christ. May your Holy Spirit be here with us, and it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We will begin this service by singing. You can stand up, sit down, however you'd like. And after that, as we're going to sing two songs, we're going to be singing Amazing Grace and Victory in Jesus. You may have heard those before. Um, and as we begin Victory in Jesus, I would invite our young people, all of our school kids, to come down to the front here um, and maybe find some space to spread out. We're going to be, uh, practice, going to be uh, sharing in our blessing in the backpacks as we send our kids off to school this year. That's how we do that. So as we begin our second song, uh, if our kids would come forward. So uh, be, please be blessed by the singing of this music.
the people of the Lord get down to pray. out his hand and the people of the Lord get down to pray verses 13 and 14, and chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow, and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Come to me, all that are weary, all you that are weary, and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, beloved. Good morning. Wow, you are a sight for sore eyes. It's great to see our church family gathered. And what a beautiful morning. Everybody say, praise God. Praise God. What a beautiful morning. When I got up this morning, and when these folks were here setting up, it was overcast. And I said an extra little prayer. Not that my prayer affected anything about that. But uh, what a beautiful morning. It's cool. It's The sun is... Now, you have know, some shaded spots, so welcome to worship. We have missed you, and uh, so it's a great blessing to be together uh, this morning. So today I want to talk about and really start a series of sermons about the choices that we make. Uh, our choices change us. And so I want us to think about this morning... Uh, the choices that we make, and every day we make choices through the course of our life, we make a series of choices, one leading to the next. And so life choices bring life changes. Life choices bring life changes. Will you say that with me one phrase at a time? Life choices, life choices. bring life changes. So that's what we're going to focus on today in the next few weeks about the choices that Jesus places before us as Christian disciples. Now, I've not seen this sign. I, I hope to see it at some point in my life. Maybe some of you have traveled to Alaska. 
you probably flew there. I've known a few people who um, travel to Alaska through Canada. So the Great Alaskan Highway at a certain point basically turns into mud or gumbo or gravel. Maybe somebody's done that here. But I've read this several places that when you enter a certain place on that Great Alaskan Highway, there's a sign. And the sign says, Can you turn the game down more? Choose your rut carefully. <laughs> you will be in it for the next 500 miles. Now, isn't that the way some choices go? You never know when you make one little choice or even a larger choice where it's going to lead you. You don't always see the outcome of that choice. So choose your route very carefully. And so as we think about that, a writer named Jan Richardson has written, what we choose changes us. And what we love transforms us. So I want you to think about that in the context of who Jesus is and what he calls us to be and do in this life and beyond. Think about the life choices and life changes that being a Christian disciple bring to us. And so just think for a moment, just reflect on the life choices that you have made. When you were making them, maybe you didn't realize the significance of them. Think about the friends at different times of your life that you have chosen. Think about the relationships that have shaped your life. Maybe you encountered someone in school or playing sports or whatever it may be in the theater. You had this encounter with someone, you became friends with them, and that relationship then began to shape you. So our life choices bring about life changes. So every choice matters. Think about your interest, your hobbies, your skills. Think about who you chose to date or not to date. I saw a few hands go across the chairs there. <laughs> Think about who you chose today or not today and how significant that was in your life. If you are a teenager or a college student, uh, when I was a young associate, uh, one of the ladies in my church uh, just simply made a comment about she noticed that I had started dating someone new and she said, be careful. She said, at this age, it's very easy just to go ahead and and marry whomever you're dating. She said, be careful with that. And I took that to heart. I don't know who broke up with whom, but that, that relationship stopped. And so all of our choices make a huge difference in our life. So think about your choice, for instance, of college or military service, or whether military service was chosen for you if you were drafted in uh, back in the day. Think about how that changed the trajectory of your life. And certainly there are the, the choices of marriage, family, career. Decision points are always forks in the road. So life choices bring about life changes. I remember my dad talking about um, Early on in his career, he was an electrical engineer. We, he had gotten out of the Navy. We, uh, my mom and dad started their marriage in St. Louis. And he started working for a small company called Century Electric. But after work one day, he and one of his buddies walked out to the parking lot and actually sat down and were talking about other job opportunities. One of those job opportunities was with McDonnell Douglas, uh, the company that makes jet airplanes. And so they sat in the parking lot debating about whether or not they should stay with this small company or go with McDonnell Douglas. So as he's told that through the years, it's often dawned on me that the way that we got from St. Louis to Corinth, Mississippi was through the choice of my dad to stay with that company that he started with. 
If he had gone with McDonnell Douglas, we probably would have wound up in California. So what a life change that would have made for all of us, the trajectory of our life. So every choice is a fork in the road. Every relationship that we have or we choose to invest ourselves in uh, creates a pathway that shapes our life and our values. In an article by Psychology Today several years ago, it said the number and depth of personal relationships has the greatest effect of all on our happiness. The number and depth of our personal relationships. This morning, look around you. Look at your church family gathered here this morning. This community of faith, our depth of relationships, a number of relationships here, it shapes us. And that's what God had in mind. And so that's true of all of our relationships. Also, several months ago, I ran across a, st a statistic. I, I don't remember exactly where I saw it. It was interesting. It said that who you marry influences about 60% or more of your happiness. Now just think about that. Who you marry affects or influences about 60%. So look at, if you are married and here this morning with your spouse, look at your spouse and say 60%. If you're a single, choose wisely. If you've been divorced, you understand, 60%. And so I thought that was very interesting. So our choices matter greatly. So this morning, I want to talk about the influence of Jesus on our life choices. Because life choices bring life changes. So as we read the Gospels, and Jesus begins to teach, he says, the kingdom of God is at hand. Come, repent, and become a disciple, a follower. Participate in the kingdom of God. Enter and participate the kingdom of God now. So that was a choice, and one of the Bible scholars named John Allison Daly says that when people listen to Jesus, they were confronted by a crisis of choice. A crisis of choice. When you heard Jesus, you were confronted with, am I going to listen and absorb what he's saying and choose to follow, or am I going to take a different path? And so Jesus' teachings, being in his presence, the choice to absorb what he is sharing with us, as the word and wisdom of God changes the trajectory of our life. And so when people encounter Jesus and he says, enter the kingdom of God now, it has eternal significance. So as we sit here and worship today in this beautiful setting, look at the clouds above. At this point in your life, your choice to listen to Jesus and obey Jesus and enter the kingdom of God, the reign of God in your life now has eternal consequences. It affects everything about who you are, who we are, and how we live every day. So our life choice to be focused on Christ and listen to him and obey him should bring about life changes. Very specific life changes. And so when we encounter Jesus, we encounter the embodiment of the kingdom of God. When we encounter Jesus and allow his word to saturate our souls and we reflect on it every day, then we gain knowledge of God and of God's heart. That's the first thing. We gain fellowship with God. What a great privilege. Knowledge of God and God's heart. Fellowship with God through Christ and the Holy Spirit. And then we are called to live with the values of Jesus. Lord of the